The death of Lalit Nathanath Mudali still remains a mystery up to date. He was a former cabinet minister of trade, national security, agriculture, education, and he was also the deputy minister of defense of Sri Lanka. He was killed on the 23rd of April in the year 1993, just weeks ahead of the provincial council elections as he was contesting for the Western Provincial Council. Was this death a result of party infighting? Was it the result of political rivalry? Or was there an actual LTTE involvement in the death of this great politician? We are going to talk about one of the most controversial political assassinations that has happened in Sri Lanka to date. It was the year 1993. Politics as usual in Sri Lanka. Lalit Tatulat Mudali had been one of the most prominent and powerful ministers in President J. R. Chaiwardana's government during 1977 to 1988. Atulat Mudali, Prime Minister Rana Singh Premadasa, and Minister of Mahavali Development Gamini Disanayaka were considered to be the closest contenders for the 1988 Sri Lankan presidential election. Prime Minister Ranasinghe Premadasa was nominated in the end. After the election victory of President Premadasa, Atulat Mudali and Disanayaka were considered as the closest contenders to the post of Prime Minister. But circumventing both of them, Premadasa appointed D.B. Vijayatunga as the Prime Minister. In 1989, Premadasa appointed his closest associate, Sirisena Kure, to the post of national organizer of the United National Party, overlooking Lalit Tatulat Mudali. Similarly, Atulat Mudali and Disanayaka were deprived of a series of important posts within government and within the party. These acts caused a great tension between Premadasa and the Atulat Mudali fraction of the party. It is against this backdrop that the Atulat Mudali faction of parliament brought in an impeachment motion against President Premadasa in 1991. The motion included 24 cases of alleged abuses of power, including illegal land deals and failing to consult the cabinet on several occasions, which is a violation of the constitution. Although the Speaker of Parliament rejected the motion in 1991, Atulat Mudali and Disanayaka resigned from their ministerial positions and their allies were expelled from the party along with them. They formed a separate political party known as the Democratic United National Front or the DUNF in November 1991. Atulat Mudali was elected its leader. Four times during 1991 and 1992, Atulat Mudali and his supporters were physically attacked, allegedly by thugs or supporters of the president. In March 1993, the government dissolved the seven provincial councils and announced the election dates on the 17th of May 1993. Atulat Mudali handed over his papers to contest seeking the chief ministership of the Western Province from the DUNF ticket. On the 23rd of April 1993, Atulat Mudali was scheduled to address meetings in Borella. Halsdorf and Kirulapana. He finished addressing two other meetings and arrived in Kirulapana around 8 pm. There were about 1000 people present at this location. As it was raining, people moved closer to the stage, some even climbing under it. Suddenly, an assassin came near Atalat Mudali, pulled out a gun, and shot him three times. At this moment, a bodyguard of Atulat Mudali named Tilak Shanta fired at the assassin and hit him on the right side of his abdomen. The assassin also shot at the bodyguard and ran away. Atulat Mudali was taken to the hospital but succumbed to his wounds around 8.50 pm on that day.
the police came to the crime scene and cordoned the area. Subsequent search operations found nothing. On the following morning, the police found a body some 200 meters from the stage where Tulat Mudali had been shot. Police found an automatic 9mm pistol with two magazines and several rounds of live ammunition, empty cartridge cases, a hand grenade, a national identity card and some money. The Colombo Judicial Medical Officer, Dr. L.B.D. Alves, held a post-mortem and recorded the cause of the death of Athalot Mudali as fatal firearm wounds to the liver, heart and lungs. He identified the cause of the death of the Tamil youth, Appaya Balakrishnan, alias Raghunathan, as cyanide poisoning. Police investigators immediately pointed their fingers at the LTTE. The LTTE had killed a number of parliamentarians and local body members during the period, so the police's point of view had a certain credibility. The police asserted that Raghunathan, whose body had appeared the next morning, was the gunman who had killed Atulat Mudali. The fact that the judicial medical officer, Dr. L.B. Dialvis, who conducted the autopsy on the body, had testified that the body smelled of potassium cyanide and that he found pieces of glass in the mouth of the body stood as strong evidence to support the police. Police determined that the youth known as Raghunathan was an LTTE activist. According to their view, LTTE had sent Raghunathan to kill Atulat Mudali and Raghunathan then bit his suicide capsule to evade capture since he had been shot by the bodyguard. President Ranasinghe Premadasa invited a team of Scotland Yard detectives and pathologists to further investigate the assassination. They arrived in the country on the 26th of April. During their course of investigation, on the 1st of May 1993, President Premadasa was killed by a suicide bombing carried out by the LTTE. Scotland Yard reported to the then appointed DB Vijay Tunga government that they had found a minute trace of cyanide in Raghunathan's body which they had taken at a second post-mortem of the youth, concluding their investigation. Detective Superintendent Alec Edwards of the Investigation and Crime Branch of New Scotland Yard forwarded an undated report to the government. The circumstances regarding the death of Atulat Mudali remained intensely controversial in the social and political arenas. The following facts made the official version of the assassination suspicious. It was reported that Rukman De Silva, a senior superintendent of police, had instructed his officers not to provide police protection to the opposition political parties at their public meetings during the provincial election. On the 23rd of April, the inspector of police, Ranagala, who was the OIC of Kirulapana, sent two police officers to tape record the speeches made at the DUNF meeting. A police search found nothing on the night of the assassination. It was only on the following morning that Kirulapana police found the dead body of Raghunathan just 200 meters from the stage. For the second post-mortem done by Dr. R.T. Shepherd on Raghunathan's body, no one had taken permission from the magistrate, which was absolutely necessary under the circumstances. It was found that Raghunathan had come to Colombo to go overseas. He was alone. There was no evidence to link him to the LTTE. Those pieces of evidence, combined with the political friction between Atalat Mudali and President Premadasa, made many independent investigators suspicious about an involvement of the President with this assassination. However, Premadasa repeatedly pleaded his innocence. He also made the favourite statement, Assassinate me if you wish, but don't assassinate my character, which I have cherished from my childhood. <laughs> जनता अबे मनसे किया न देवल, मनसे सकस करना चेतना, 
අපි නිර්භීතව ප්‍රකාශ කරන අයිතිය අපි හැමෝටම ඕනේ මේ මා ජනතාවගේ හිතේ තුල තියෙන බය නැති කරන්න තමයි මගේ පරිදි මම තමුන් ආසන පූජා කරුවේ මේ ජාතික සදන පක්ෂ ජාති ආගම් කුල බේදෙන් සොර විලාවක් පරිත්‍යාග කරු මම जीवित परित्यागण लैस्टिक मत कर्मी मम निशा देने का